This is video three now uh, in our series four-way analysis. And again, the playlist that we're going to develop for this series will be featured at the website digital-university.org. In the last video, we were uh, trying to find a way to express this function in a uh, four-way series. The function is e to the x. And we're going from minus pi to plus pi. And it is also periodic. And in the last video, we were in the process of trying to determine the coefficient of a sub n. And we left off with this expression. a sub n, of course, is this. And that is equal to this expression right here. And what we're going to do is this integral we're going to call i. It appears here, and it's also on this side of the equation over here. So for the next line, we just simply multiplied through. We have 1 over n squared pi times this part. Then we'll have minus 1 over n squared pi times the integral. So let's take this now over to this side of the equation. And what we'll have is 1 over pi plus 1 over n squared pi times the integral, this. And that will equal this expression, 1 over n squared pi times e to the x times the cosine of nx. x goes from minus pi to plus pi. So keep things in better focus. This will equal 1 over n squared pi times e to the pi times the cosine of pi x minus e to the minus pi times the cosine of minus n pi. And we didn't write this correctly. x is pi. This should be n times pi. OK, the cosine of n pi, cosine minus n pi. The cosine is an even function. So we can just treat this as the cosine of n pi, then. So this equals 1 over n squared pi times the cosine of n pi times e to the pi minus e to the minus pi. And as we pointed out in the previous video, that is 2 times the hyperbolic sine of pi. So let's write that in. Now what about this? We have the cosine of n pi. Well, when n equals 1, this is negative 1. When n equals 2, then it's positive 1. When n equals 3, the cosine of minus 3 pi, now it's negative 1. When n equals 4, it's positive 1. So this equals minus 1 to the n. When n is even, this is positive, just like this is. 
when n is odd, this is negative, as is this. So we can replace this with minus 1 to the n. two times the hyperbolic sine of pi. Okay, now let's go to the left side of the equation and what we have then is n squared pi plus pi divided by n squared pi squared equals 1 over n squared pi times minus 1 to the n times 2 times the hyperbolic sign of pi. And here we have an n squared on both sides. We can multiply and get rid of that. Um, we can multiply both sides by pi squared. And that will cancel with this. Multiply both sides by pi, actually. And that will cancel with this. And that will leave a pi down here in the denominator. And that's what we want. We want to know what is i over pi. This is our integral i. We want to know what is it divided by pi. So let's just write it out then. 1 over pi times our integral of interest minus pi to pi e to the x cosine nx dx will equal, now on this side, divide both sides by this, and we will have minus 1 to the n, 2 times the hyperbolic sine of pi divided by pi times n, we'll factor the pi out, we'll have pi times n squared plus 1. And that is our a sub n term. So there we have it, finally. Remember in the last video we had determined a0. That was this. Now, what we need to do for the next step, we need to determine b sub n. And it looks like probably we won't have enough time in this video to determine this. And then put all the pieces together. Where we have a0, a n, b n, and then fit it into our expression. But don't go away. Stay with us. We're making progress. So far, we have determined this and this. Now we're going to determine this. Remember, L is pi, so we're going from 1 over pi minus pi to pi e to the x sine nx. Pi divided by pi is just 1, of course. So let's get busy, and let's see if we can determine what b sub n is after we make some room. Okay, B sub N. Is 1 over pi. The integral from minus pi plus pi of e to the x 
sine of nx dx. And again, we're going to integrate this by parts, where the integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. So here, once again, we call this u. u equals e to the x du equals e to the x dx. dv equals sine nx dx v now the integral of the sine is minus the cosine so this will be minus 1 over n times the cosine of nx okay so now let's do what we did before. Let's call this integral right here, just to save some writing and save some space, this will designate as the integral i. So what we have is 1 over pi times the integral i will equal 1 over pi times u times v u times v so we have minus 1 over n e to the x times the cosine of nx minus the integral of v du mind that's this so this will be plus 1 over n and we have e to the x times the cosine of nx dx okay um, Let's just multiply across by pi. Oh, and this is going from minus pi to pi. And of course, that's the limits here. And let's multiply across by pi. So we have minus n over pi and here we have pi. Okay, um, let's see. We just determined what this video or what this integral is in the, in the last video and earlier in this video. We had one over pi of e to the x times the cosine of n x dx and that was equal to minus 1 to the n 2 times the hyperbolic sine of pi then it was divided by pi n squared plus 1 We just figured that out. Now you want an over n pi. Okay, so what do we have? We have that 1 over pi, and that's times this integral. We'll just leave it as i for right now. We have 1 over pi 
times i equals we have this part and that's going to be minus 1 over n pi and then here we will have e to the pi minus e to the minus pi so you have e to the pi cosine of n pi minus e to the minus pi cosine minus n pi. That's this part. Then we have plus this integral, which is this. So we have plus minus 1 to the n 2 times the hyperbolic sine of pi. whole thing is divided by pi n times n squared plus 1. Okay, well this looks very familiar. First of all, the cosine of minus n pi is the same thing as the cosine of n pi because uh, the cosine is an even function. So this is equal to, and time is getting away from us, minus 1 over n pi times the cosine of n pi, factoring this out. And again, these are the same. They're equal. e to the pi minus e to the minus pi. And then we have this term. Well, let's look at this. We know what that is. That's two times the hyperbolic sine of pi. And that's minus one to the n. We've just gone through all that. So this expression is minus one to the n and that's two times the hyperbolic sine of pi. And then we have plus minus 1 to the n 2 times the hyperbolic sine of pi. Hope we're keeping things in focus here. Divided by pi n n squared plus 1. And that is equal to 1 over pi times our integral i. Which is this. Or what we can just simply say is that 1 over pi times i is b sub n. So when we have 1 over pi times i, instead we can just say b sub n. So let's do that. Let's go to here, and we can say that b sub n is equal to and let's see, we can factor this out and I think we have to do that, we have to make some more room and we're already running out of our time limit. Um, okay, we're very close to determining what b sub n is, so don't give up on us. Uh, come back, join us in the next video. Without too much trouble, we should be able to determine what b sub n is. Then finally, we can put all the pieces together a0, a sub n, B sub n, and finally get our answer. That we promise we will have wrapped up in the next video. So come join us for the next video and let's finish off this problem.